All right, guys, welcome back. We're on our conversations controller and getting ready to move to the messages controller and views and stuff like that. So I was having errors the last time we left off and I'm not quite sure what happened, but I kind of just rebooted the server and everything started working again. So you might every so often give a gut check to something like that. Uh, but essentially here I've come to the error page that's saying, hey, there's no message controller index template for me to render. So what we can do now is create it. So I'm gonna make a messages directory in our views folder. And within that, we're gonna have just an index view. And it's gonna feature some code, of course. <laughs> so we'll have the title. So that's that part and below will actually be the form uh, that is the where you basically input the message so that makes sense we're going to use the rails version of the form i think it's a little more clear in this regard when you're creating a uh, form between two models that need to associate simple form is kind of confusing for that and even though the name's called simple form i don't find it that simple and I'm beginning to lean towards just the Rails specific forms personally, so I might I might update my kickoff project to not include simple form anymore. We'll see though. Class text area. Uh, we can just put a placeholder here. Something like that. And then we want to. Um, get the user ID and to do that I don't want to actually display a field or anything but we can say a text field which is like an input field and make it the user ID and the value will be our current user ID this is a way you can get this to go through your controller from the view and we'll just call type hidden so it doesn't display it's a hidden field All right, so I had a little typo in my form there and we are back with this look and feel. So we've got everything square. We can see our messaging uh, UI and I can message Andy right now as John Smith. So maybe I could just say, hi, Andy. Uh, still got something spelt wrong. Yep, and the message time. So that's that helper we created before. Uh, where are we at? It's in our model actually. So in message should be created at and I'll backtrack and try that again. Message Andy. There, it's still submitted but it was just an error. So cool and that time is way off. I feel like my app is set in the wrong configuration but right now what is it? Just for clarity 3.13 p.m. or 3.37 so anyway, well, that's how you message. And at this point, if Andy were to log in, which I will, in fact, before I do, I'm gonna create a new trade as John Smith. So that'll 
do its thing. Uh, eventually, I want to add some JavaScript to show this progress indication. In fact, I'll do that right now. Uh, so with that done, we've got kind of the look and feel and logic of the app taking place. Next, we want to add a bit of um, interactivity to make this look and feel the way we want it to when we upload images. So it's it's not like super cool looking, but it's nice to see a progress indication of when your files upload as opposed to nothing. So I think it's a good start anyway. So I'm going to call it direct uploads.js. And you might notice when we made our initial form for the upload process on our form, I think I talked about this, but we have a direct upload attribute that you pass to the form itself as well as multiple. And that allows us to upload multiple photos at once and also do this direct upload concept that's baked into Rails. So with that in mind, you can create this file and pass in some JavaScript. I'm gonna just copy and paste it because it's I copied it from the documentation. You guys can too. Um, but it's essentially this. It's using more modern based JavaScript too. So we're adding event listeners based on the direct upload thing. So all these data attributes are being added since you did that direct upload. Um, you set that in the actual element. So that's important. And then you can hook into the progress if errors happen, if there's end and point, all those things and do stuff. So here we're actually going to create those elements that show the progress. Uh, but it needs some styling too. So I'm going to add that next and call it direct uploads.scss. And we'll do the same bit. And the button file doesn't really apply. I don't think I'll include that. I was trying something there. Uh, but this hooks into that class and data attribute as well. And you can co correlate your styles based on the actions going on. So that's nice. One thing that I need to do is import it into the main application file. Save that down. And for grins, I'm going to just restart the server. And we'll go back to our app. I think this data will still be here. Nope, okay. Some indication when we click create trade. Yeah, there we go. So that's kind of fancy. So John Smith created this one. Uh, since I'm the author, I can see, just go to my conversations this way. Feel free to doctor this up any which way you want to, but I can also edit the trade too. And Go to conversations. Uh, looks like I spelled it wrong. Recipient. Okay, so now I could just say any conversations that I've created with pers people. So since I create created that or I clicked that messaging button, that creates that conversation, and we've already established that message and thread between each other. Um, so you see that stuff there, and you, on the homepage you see the new post too. One thing I, I realized was a bug in the beginning was when you add or update photos on the trade itself, they're not being updated per se. So you need to hook into active storage and do another call when that happens. You can look at the docs to make that happen. It's pr probably a pretty easy concept to get working. So you might reference those. I ran out of time, so it was a matter of just getting things going. Um, besides that, though, we can message people will go to that conversation directly in this regard. So that's kind of nice. Um, other than that, you can go to your conversations as a user and see everyone you message as well as all the users you might want to message. This might be a, like a security thing you don't want to introduce just because each user ever will be here. And that's kind of crazy to think about, but up to you how you want to author your app. So I think that's pretty much it. Let me log out as John Smith and log back in. So at this point you shouldn't see, ooh, that's not right. Undefined method ID for nil class. Uh, okay, I need to check if the user is signed in there. I think that's what's wrong. So let me go check that, go to the trades, show. So we'll say user signed in. With 
question mark and then a big and that. Let's see if that does a trick. It does, cool. So conversations wouldn't make sense there as well. So say else if, uh, let's see. So I'm doing this on the fly. User signed in, the current user ID is not equal to the trade user ID. So if we say the user is signed in, we can make it easy by just saying else if, I think it should be like this. And then we need to do some more logic that makes sure it's a user. Okay, we could just do this, but let's just say current user. We'll just do a double equal sign here. Should do the trick. Yeah, there you go. So right now I'm not signed in, so you should see this and go to sign up. So that's how you would kind of think about that workflow and loophole that is in play there. So that I think ends the app. That's at least a start to get a messaging in app messaging going on. I know it's not the most exciting topic. It's not like the latest JavaScript train or anything like that, but this kind of gets more into deeper rails problems that you might have where you want to do more within your app as opposed to just making records and modifying records. So this is kind of the correlation between those things and how you can maybe extend your own app if you're building one. So hopefully that helped you. If you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate you to either share it with your friends, maybe like or subscribe it if you're interested in seeing more. And I think that will be it for right now. So I'll simply sign off and say thanks for watching and hopefully you see you in the very next Let's Build. All right, thanks guys.